Welcome to Kotlin Thursdays, and happy Halloween! My name is Amanda, and we'll be covering image processing in Kotlin. If you've used applications like Snapchat, Photoshop, Instagram, you might be familiar with image processing and not even know it. It's not exactly a Kotlin-specific topic, but playing around with images is a really great way to develop computational thinking and think about algorithms in a way that's far more visual and tangible. We're going to be exploring image processing with Tornado FX, which is a Java FX framework written in Kotlin. It's really easy and it's fun to learn, so let's go ahead and get started setting up a Tornado FX project on IntelliJ. If you haven't already installed Tornado FX, you're going to want to go to your preferences and install Tornado FX through a plugin. If you don't see Tornado FX in your plugins, you can go head over to Browse Repositories and type in Tornado FX there, and you should be able to download it right from the repository. Let's go ahead and create a new project. You will see a couple of different options for setting up Tornado FX, but for now, we're just going to choose Maven. Maven is particularly useful if you don't have a lot of dependencies in your projects. We're going to go ahead and name this Image Processing, and we're going to click Finish. Now that we have our project open, let's go ahead and explore what's, the con what's in the contents of this. If we look at our POM XML file, we're going to see some of the dependencies that are required to run this project. You can see that we have Kotlin version 1.2.60 and Tornado FX version 1.7.17. Because I know that this Kotlin version is outdated, I can actually uh, update this. But if you're not sure what versioning you have, you can use your plugin preferences to actually check. So in this case, we have Kotlin 1.3.0. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that back in my POM and we can run that again, and now we have an updated version of the projects. To create a Tornado FX application, you must have at least one class that extends app. An app is an entry point to the application and specifies the initial view. Tornado FX allows creating style sheets with pure Kotlin code. This has the benefits of compilation checks, auto-completion, and other perks that come with statically typed code. Tornado FX provides builder syntax that will streamline your UI code. Note that all builders are written in lowercase so as not to confuse them with the manual instantiation of UI element classes. You'll need to set up minimal configuration to run an instance of your application. Luckily, the Tornado FX plugin already did most of the painful setup for you. We're going to name our configuration something meaningful, like launch. And then we see that we already have the working directory as well as the app class. Since we have all that stuff, we can go ahead and click apply and OK and we'll get back to coding. And if we go ahead and click launch, we can see a rendering of the Hello Tornado FX application. We're going to need an image to work with, and I have a fierce rooster to work with, which of course you're welcome to access via the Kotlin Thursdays GitHub repository. You're always welcome to use your own as well. I'm going to start with replacing the title with I am a chicken, and we're going to keep the root for hbox, which is known as a horizontal box. We're going to render this image with the URL of the rooster photo, and then we're going to render that into an image view. The strategy that I like to use is to write a little bit of code, check if nothing broke, and then keep going. And here we go. Hold up. What is this? Oh, okay. There's there's more of this. And uh, so I so I guess what this means is that the rooster uh, didn't render to the full size. So what we're going to do is add some layout constraints. So we have these H box constraints in which we have our pref width and then our pref height. I'm not really sure how big the image is, but it looks like it's about 640 by 427. So we're going to make that 
pref width of 640 and pref height of 427. I'm going to check it again, and there we have it. We have a proper rooster image. To be able to play with pixels in your image, you'll have to pull the photo URI into an image variable and create a writable image of it. The JavaFX writable image allows a canvas while storing the URI as an image which will give us access to Pixel Reader and Pixel Writer. This is really convenient. So I start making my constructor for a writable image. It looks like my IDE is already complaining. IntelliJ is pretty smart. We can use it to help us figure out what's wrong with this. We see that the image pixel reader was actually expecting something else. If you click command and you click the function that you're going on, you can actually navigate to the proper function that you're supposed to be working with. So in this case, we have a writable image which takes a pixel reader, the width and the height. Now that we have this information, we can go ahead and kind of come back to the code. We know that we need a pixel reader, but we also need the width and the height. I don't really have that right now, so let's just go ahead and take the width, which is going to be the image width, and we're going to take the height, and of course that's going to be image height. We'll just go ahead and feed that through. Okay, we have our width, we have our height, and it is complaining again. And it looks like it's asking us to take a double to an int, so we're just going to go ahead and convert those to ints, and our problem is solved. So we're going to replace our rooster with the writable image. Now that we have our writable image, let's go ahead and try our hand at writing these dual pixels. We'll start with something easy, making the entire image duller. Okay, so we're going to make a private function called make dollar, and we're going to pass a writable image, and that's going to be about it. We're going to need to iterate through every single pixel of the image because we have essentially a 2D array representing an image. We can grab every single pixel by looping through both the rows and the columns. So in Kotlin, we're going to have for x in 0 until image and y in zero until height, meaning that we're not going to actually reach the height number, but the one before that. We need to grab the color for the particular pixel that we're trying to access. So we're going to get the pixel reader, and we're going to get the color from the x and the y coordinate that we're working with. For us to be able to render an image differently, we're going to actually have to use a pixel writer to be able to replace those pixels. So we're going to set the color to the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So we're just taking the same pixel and then overwriting it with the pixel that we picked up, only desaturated. And we're going to go ahead and take this function and then we're going to apply it through the image. We're going to hit make dollar and let's go ahead and see what happens with this. So this is particularly interesting because it says we have an invalid URL or resource not found. Given that the rooster is our only resource, there's probably something wrong with it. And taking a look at it, oh, I, uh, I mixed up JPEG with PNG. So let's go ahead and fix that. We're going to try that again. Okay, it's not broken anymore. It looks like it's duller, but I can't be sure, so I'm just going to go ahead and apply it a couple more times, and uh, we'll see if it's really duller. Great! We were able to grab every single pixel of the rooster photo, and then be able to manipulate those pixels. We're out of time for today, but next week join us as we explore pixel math and writing our own pixel filters. See you next time!